Hey guys, Jared for Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to tie a little minnow pattern. We're going to tie the rolled muddler, um, which I think gained popularity in the Pacific Northwest. I know it's popular there. It's a great, skinny, sparse minnow pattern. Guys are using it out in Scandinavia. They're catching sea trout. They're catching cutties. It's a great, simple pattern, easy to change up, and we're going to get started on it right now. So in the vise today, I have a, a hook that I really, really enjoy tying on. It's the A-Rex NS122. So it's their light stinger hook, and this is a size six, and I have a gold tungsten bead to match. This is what I like here. It's going to be mostly gold. So we're going to get started here with some red UTC thread, and this is in 70. Um, you may want to use 140. We're going to do a little bit of spinning of deer hair, but because we're barely using any material, you really can get away with a lighter thread if you have a light touch. So for a tail, I'm going to use um, a natural wood duck feather. You can use one of the substitutes, dyed mallard flank, something like that. Uh, it really doesn't matter. It's just this creates the look I'm going for, but so will that mallard. So I'm just going to strip off a good chunk. Um, whatever that is there, and I'm going to fold this in half. And I'm going to use this as my tail. So for a tail, you want it to be a little longer, either right there, that hook leg shank, a little bit shorter, whatever you like, but right there is about just shy of that hook shank. And I want that right on top. Oop, I pulled it out a little bit, but you know, that's good. So we're going to come here and just create this body, and I'm just doing this to create a nice even taper. Uh, we're going to use diamond braid. You can cover this up with diamond braid pretty well, so you don't have to be too, too careful there. But we are anyway. So I'm going to use some gold diamond braid. Um, you could use flat braid. You could use tinsel. Uh, you could use a number of things. You could use flashaboo. So I have a good little length here tie this in. Uh, I'm leaving space here. Notice that my tie off point is about a bead length behind that bead and that's because we're going to spin there. I want to keep my bulk to a minimum. Makes it easier to spin some deer hair over. All the way back, all the way up. Good, good, good. So let's just wrap a nice little body. And I don't want that to interfere with my tail too much, so be careful there. Okay, so we're just going to cut this out here. Beep. Um, I'm just going to reinforce this. You can rib this. Um, you can leave it. I'm just going to throw a little bit of solarized bone dry on there. And this stuff is super thin. All I want is a thin coating. Uh, I did get a lot on there, so I'll just spread it around. And really just cover that up just to give it a little bit of reinforcement. Nothing major here. So there we go. So let's tie in our wing. So for the wing, we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to grab this same feather. Let's see the chunk I took out of there. And we're actually going to take some of this more barred or prominently barred portion here just because I like it. Okay, so I have this nice little chunk here. You'll see it's a little bit darker. I got some good barring in this. I'm just going to take a measurement so it matches up with my tail. Maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter. I've got some short ones in there, so I'll lose them. That's okay. You know, that looks pretty good to me. We're going to roll with it. Okay, a nice even thread base. At this point, too, um, if you did want to put in flash, you can put in flash. You don't have to put in flash. So I'm just going to put in um, a single strand, one on each side of root beer crystal flash. I like this root beer. I think it's more gold than the gold crystal flash. It's just going to add a subtle, subtle flash in the wing. Let's put one piece on our side. So getting this all tangled and then we'll fold this over 
and put it on the other side. And then we'll trim that a little bit longer than the wing. And that'll get kind of controlled when we throw some deer hair in here, so I'm not too worried about it. Okie doke, so we're just going to start with a deer hair wing here. Uh, this is a very, very sparse wing. I probably have 20 fibers here. This is natural deer hair. Uh, this is actually coming from one of the hairline primo strips, which are excellent. Perfect use is this pattern here. So I'm going to put my 20 or 30 fibers, more like 20, in my stacker. Stack my tips, and then we'll get them tied in sure I've combed out everything out of this. There's no junk in here. It's just these nice fibers. So let's take a measurement. Again, we're going to use this tail and wing length. It's right there. That's what we want. So let's do that. And then if we want, we can take out a little bit of junk. We don't have to. But this, uh, twist your thread up, spin it counterclockwise, and make two loose pinch wraps. It's going to go right on top of the hook shank and right there. You know, we might come back and loosen that up a little bit, but we'll leave it. Come through here, tie this down, and then create a nice little thread base. And then we're going to put our last clump of deer hair in here. So we're going to use about the same amount, maybe a little more. Um, you can vary this up. The density on this should be light. It should be very sparse. But there's different amounts of sparseness. I've seen plenty of these tied with almost exactly the amount of deer hair we have on there now and no more. So you can get away with that for sure. I'm going to do another clump. and I got a little much here. I'm going to do about 30 fibers. Or what I think is 30. Make sure I get all that under fur junk out. We don't need to stack this. We just need to make sure their butts are relatively even. So it makes it easier to handle. We're going to cut out our tips. Whatever this is, guys. This, to me, is 30 fibers. That's what we're going to roll with. We're going to cut out our tips. <laughs> and then come in here. Pull this stuff out of the way. Get our bead in position. And throw two loose wraps, pull tight, and roll it around. And this thread, like I said, I'm using UTC-70. This is not the ideal thread for a lot of people. It will work. We are not spinning a ton, but be careful. So let's whip finish and we'll trim this out. Okay. So... What we want to do when we trim this is grab all of our tapered wing here and keep that out of the way. We're going to cut this pretty tight. So right off the bead, let's come in and get a nice round cut going all the way around. And then like, I don't like that. We'll take care of that. And then for the bottom, I like to cut it flat. And then I can come in here, get anything that's too long. Come around. Again, anything that we don't like, we can come in here and take out. And just cleaning anything up that's a little stray. Get rid of that. <laughs> and that looks pretty good to me. Guys, it's a great little sparse minnow pattern. Easy to tie, easy to tie in a couple different colors. Uh, sea trout love it, cutthroat run it, uh, sea, sea run cutties, whatever you're throwing at. All your trout in your rivers are going to love it. Give it a try, and we'll see you next time.